Well, it's 6.30. Welcome back. It's 6.30 on the dot. 6.30. On time, as Everywhere. always. Welcome on back. Earth. <laughs> 6.30. Welcome back, everyone, to uh, a the new time slot for Live Brush. Uh, my name is Raymond Bonilla. And to my, I guess, my left, right? Would it be my left or my right? I think it's I to your know. right. Because I think you're on the you're on the right. I'm, I'm here. Okay. Well, whatever. Anyway, okay. Uh, me. Yeah. The me other person is over there. <laughs> I'm over on that side. Everyone. Um, I'm Tyler. And who are Jacobson. you, sir? I'm Tyler Jacobson. That's my name. And we are being amazingly produced by the incredible. Okay, well, cha -cha -cha. it continues to be amazing that you are produced at all. Yeah, the indestructible, omnipotent, and ever patient Kate Walsh. <laughs> so. Yeah, I don't know how you put up with our bullshit, but you do it with grace. <laughs> I love your bullshit. I'm marrying half your bullshit. That's yeah, true. that's true. That's true. True. Congratulations. She's marrying half of, <laughs> half of my brush. Half of live brush, okay? That's a commitment. All yeah. right, Tyler, so you know, what are we doing today? We are painting paintings from, I don't know if you guys have ever heard of this film out there, but um, it's called Predator. It came out in 1987, and it's very near and dear to my heart. I know, I know Ray loves it. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, it's based off a lost uh, Shakespeare script, right? It is one of the found. lost ones. Like, yeah, I think it, it was probably written in like 1602 or 1603, like right in that Jacobean period. I think, period. So. I think and, so. I um, think so. It got lost, but way down the line, you know, John McTiernan, probably one of the greatest directors of all time, um, found it, found the script, an old manuscript when he was visiting London. Um, and they, so he's like, this is great. This is about London, a bunch New York. of, he changed a few things. <laughs> yeah, 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 he's in London, New York. <laughs> changed a few things, um, updated a little bit of it. And that, then we got this great movie about, um, about some guys just trying to have a vacation in the jungle. And there's a monster that keeps screwing everything up. Spoilers, there's a monster. Yeah. Um, if, if you haven't seen this movie, I don't know. F in the chat. Um, just say F in the chat. Don't don't F in the chat if you haven't seen the movie. F in the <laughs> chat if you think it's absolutely ridiculous to assume that no one has seen our, our wonderful live brushers. Okay, haven't all seen this. Listen, you guys can't it's been have a long week. Reasons to put F in the chat because then there's no the F in the chat becomes meaningless. That's true. We got to keep meaning to it. Um, so well, let's talk about talking about F in the F in the chat. Our F in the chat emote is live. Oh yes. Oh, everybody, worry, please take advantage of this. this. <laughs> okay, good. <laughs> please take advantage of this, all you wonderful chatters. I wish we could see the chat so that we could see how awesome the F in the chat's being used. You know, if you go back and watch the VOD on Twitch, you can also watch the chat as it was happening. That's when yeah. I'll get to see it. That's when you'll get to see it. There was also an so excellent- So F in the chat, I believe that Tyler watches the VOD of his own show. <laughs> I certainly don't, I don't watch it immediately after we've done every single one. I definitely don't yeah. watch it right if after- you did, you would, know, you would know the F in the chat edge. okay? He does, it's very cute. Uh, I I, also, the problem already, is I can't read. So. We already have an amazing recommendation from Tengu Bruxo in the chat that we, okay. should, we probably should have done. But can you guys imagine? It says, uh, you guys need to do a piece, one with Dutch and one with Dylan with that handshake. What if that had been the piece and it was all oh, framed up, oh, the left oh, side and the right man. side, and they were doing the handshake? Oh, my between. God. <laughs> is it too late to just redraw your piece, Tyler? You know what? We're doing oh that next week, God. Ray. Oh my God! And you'll paint on. I, we'll have to frame it just right, but and then we'll send it to each other, and then we'll finish the other halves. How about that? Well, that would be crazy. Why don't we? Oh man! I'm and I'll trick you. I'll you. say that I did it in acrylic. 
No, no, I tricked you. I'll say that it'll be oils, but I say I did an acrylic, and I'll be like, keep doing it in acrylic, and then you'll paint, and it'll fall right off. Sucker. Or I would say like, yeah, I totally did it, and then I'll just <laughs> mail you a printout from the internet. Ah, <laughs> uh, man. So it's been it's been a long week, and it's it, that's yeah, why we're not. That's why we're just effing around for the right now, because Jesus. Um, but we're here. We're here now. And we're ready to roll on some predator stuff. I think I told so, Ray ahead of time that we're going to be just, we're not even going to be talking about art. We're just going to be talking about predator and everything there is to be known about predator. But before we talk about that, uh, I just want to talk about how I'm painting this. Uh, this is on a uh, panel, a wood panel. Uh, I've done a digital drawing that I mounted using matte medium, acrylic matte medium. I drew it on my iPad and I uh, mounted it, glued it down. And now I hit some washes with uh, this uh, last time with the two so painting, I did, I hit, I covered the whole thing in a burnt sienna uh, wash of gouache, which is an opaque water color. But, um, and then I lifted it out using water to reveal the light areas. This time I'm actually selecting um, uh, uh, or limiting the lift out to a specific area right here. And I like to use that uh, if I really don't have any need to lift out anything else but this one area. So I've covered everything else in a wash of uh, acrylic. And uh, and then the burnt sienna right here is a in gouache. I'll be lifting that out and then going back over in acrylic. Tyler, what are you doing? Um, you know, I thought I'm completely I breaking the show by talking about art stuff, but uh, you know. Yeah, I mean, I thought we were going to talk about you know this incredible Shakespearean film, but um, I'm just going to do with oils this week. I was going to try and do something else, but um, I think I just want to do this as an oil painting because I'm I'm just doing like a waste up shot of the Predator um, from the movie Predator. I don't know if you guys knew that's what we're working on. Um, and I'm just going to go straight in. I'm going to, I think I'm going to spend some time on this one. I think we'll work on this one for a few episodes. I'm what? Gonna nice and, I'm going to go nice and slow because Ray's trying to, Ray's, Ray's trying to beat me. He's trying to finish before <laughs> me this time. So I'm, I'm already setting myself up for, I'm going slow this time. <laughs> so you taking said last slow. time, man. Taking you it totally really, yeah, no, last I'll be done in like 15 minutes. We'll see. He's like, dude, I think I'm done. I think I'm going to sign it. <laughs> From Chappie McChapman. Hey. What is your favorite, favorite line from the movie? Oh man. Um, oh man. So many of them. I think I was before chat. I was. I was when we were setting up the show. I was yelling, Billy. Yeah. I think. I think that. Um. What was it? The. Um. The dude's like bullshit. You're not afraid of no man. And then Billy's like, it ain't no man. That's one of my favorite yeah. moments. Um. My, two, my favorite. Oh, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. No, I was gonna say like uh, my favorite quote from the line from the movie is actually a the sound of tobacco spit on uh, that <laughs> Jesse Ventura's character makes on the plane. Yeah. When yeah, they're Blaine. just spit and he's just like Blaine, yeah. My my favorite line. This is this is a real answer. Uh, my favorite wow. line <laughs> is the line. Um, oh, how does it go? It's a great oh, answer, okay? You're ghosting yeah, us, it's... motherfucker. Oh, yeah. You give away our position give away one more time. I'm going to bleed yeah. you real quiet. Leave you here. That is a good one. That is actually I'm a, a good big, one. I'm a big fan of um, uh, I Ain't Got Time to Bleed. That's really good. I Ain't Got Time um, to Bleed. Yeah. Stick like Around that. is a classic. No, Arnold puns are not, they're not allowed. <laughs> oh, fine. Oh, we've got Except a question, an art question, believe it or not, from the Fat Baron oh. in the chat. Question right, from Ray. Right. I notice you keep your hand far from the brush end. Does that change your technique yeah. somehow? That's a great, great uh, question. So uh, the, the brush is, I can actually get a more pressure sensitivity, uh, a finer range of it uh, by holding it from the tip. So you can actually uh, feel or get a tapered edge. I can get a light touch, a thin or thick touch because remember the brushes, it, it flexes every time it, uh, let me see if I can 
you know, it, it flexes, right? And so if you have it up here like this, it only flex, it flexes at the same rate. So it's always usually pretty flexed. But if I hold it down by the edge, I have to press much harder to do that. So I actually have a, you know, a more, a broader range of uh, pressure sensitivity on my brush. This is the reason why I hold it from, from the edge. Great yeah, question. I tend, to, I tend to kind of slide up and down on mine as well. Like I'll, sometimes yeah. if I want to be a little looser, I go all the way to the end. Um, if I'm getting really tight in like some small detail, I kind of go up close to the ferrule there. Um, but yeah, I, I, it's kind of like, like Ray said, it's like, it, however, if you want a little more control, you can, depends on where you hold it on the brush. We used to have Zhao Ming Wu, when we would be in his classes, he'd be holding it like the very, like the very end, the, like, like just this. The tip. And like yeah. standing like as far away as he possibly could, which is great. <laughs> that that's how that's a good way to get like a view on your overall compositions like standing way right. back from the piece when i'm painting an yeah, illustration sure. on this easel here i i'll step all the way back across the room to just get a good eye on the, on whatever i'm painting from aaron Rafino, uh more on the aaron. yes Yo. the our vip would you be painting more with your arm than with your wrist um yeah so when i'm when i want to make a nice straight that's a great vip question um that's no it's a great cool. mvp that's an mvp question um so when i make a straight when i want to make a straight line i'll draw with more of my arm if i want to uh do more of like a, a little flick i guess it's more of you know let me see yeah i maybe use a little bit more of my wrist um, but, uh, so it's a combination of using your shoulder and your arm, you know, shoulder and your wrist. It's, it's meant to, when you're holding it from the edge, it really helps with that. Holding it from the reason why a lot of us tend to just hold the brush like this is just because we're used to, we were taught how to do that using a pencil in school. Um, and so it's the most familiar, uh, but you know, in school, when Tyler and I went to school, we were taught to, to really just give as much uh, distance as we can. And it allows us a, a greater range of, of, of movement. I mean, there's not, there's no problem with just like coming up close and putting something down, but, and you'll see me do that. Uh, but, you know, uh, like, like Tyler was saying, with Zhao Ming was a classic example is it allows us to not lean in as much. So you don't want to be too close to your piece. You want to always kind of have a good view of the whole thing at, at the same time. Um, and, uh, you also want to uh, have the greatest range of movement from your arm. So I can go like this really easily and, you know, turn my brush as I'm going up and down and so on and so forth. So uh, yes, yeah, it, it does have, uh, so the short answer is yes. Long answer is we're wind back, like see this, above. I like this line of questioning though, because it's kind of like when you're playing a video game and someone's like, and someone hasn't played it, but you've played it forever. And they're like, what button do I press here? And you're like, I don't know, the one on, uh, I don't know. I just, I just, it's like, it becomes like a muscle memory to you. So I like this line of question because it's sort of making us try to understand why we hold the brush the way we do. Well, Kate, do you feel like that? Because uh, Tyler really talks as if he's not really that good of a video gamer, if that's the case. <laughs> Um, I'm going to be totally honest. I was not listening. However, we do have a question from the chat. <laughs> oh, producer wasn't even listening. From Eric Davisheim. Question, do either of you use mall sticks while you're painting? Oh, absolutely. Totally. Um, Where's your mall stick? Mine, I left mine upstairs. Yeah, mine's right over here. Um, I'm using, I used to use a cane and I lost it in a move. So I just use one of these like rubber ended like, metal ones. The cane was way better though, because you can kind of hook it over the top of the easel. Um, I need to find a, I need to go to like the Goodwill and find like an old cane again. Can you talk about what a mall stick is for? Oh yeah. Um, so if you folks aren't familiar, this is a mall stick. It, it's essentially, so you can use it by, if you can see my hand in here, if I don't want to rest my hand on the painting and I'm doing something like pretty high fidelity, I can prop the mall stick up on the corner of the canvas or on the canvas itself in an area that's like not wet. Um, I'm going to prop it up on the easel up here. 
just on the edge there. And then I can rest my hand on that and I can stay really steady and get really tight um, paint lines or paint marks or whatever um, without smudging the painting, especially if it's like wet all over. Um, I also use it, like say if, if this guy had like a sword or something, I would, I'd use this to basically as a straight edge to like draw a straight line. Um, that works pretty well as well. So there's a lot of uses for it if you need one, but it's a, just a great way to keep your hands off of uh, wet paint. I mean, I guess. I guess, you know, if you want to use it, if you want to be a cheater, use a mall stick. <laughs> Real artists have nerves of steel. No, great question, though. Mall stick's awesome. From Nick DeLuca96, when painting Nick. a portrait that doesn't have a lot of shadow shapes to get an easy likeness, what are some tips to compensate for this? Yeah, it can be tricky when you're painting a portrait that doesn't have like really clearly defined shadows, like a hard light source. Um, th this is when you kind of have to start thinking. Um, oh, oops, I'm knocking my finger around. Um, you got to start thinking. You got to start using all of your knowledge about how light and shadow works. Um, because when you don't have like a strong light source, like if it's like a Rembrandt light or it's soft, um, you have to remember you know, the fundamentals of form and like as form recedes and advances, like how the light plays off of that. Um, so it gets a lot more complicated when you're dealing with um, a portrait with no defined shadows. Um, I don't know if I have a particular like perfect method on how to do it, but what I, I try to do is stay really aware of the forms. Um, if, you know, if you're painting a nose, you gotta remember like where the form turns away and whenever the form turns away, it's gonna, the value is gonna go down um, I, I stay really conscious of those um, fundamentals. Yeah, I think that's a great, great point. Um, Nick, I got an email for you soon, for sure. I uh, just wanted to point that out. I wanted to say that publicly because I have uh, Nick emailed me. Um, but uh, I think the, the, the main takeaway uh, is the knowledge of form and structure. I think it's like, it, it's got to, if you want it to, it all depends on whether or not you want it to be, um, what do you want it to feel like, right? Because you, if you didn't have a, a, a direct light source and maybe it was subtle, if you just wanted a silhouetted face, you know, like a, a backlit face, then you really don't have to put all that much structure. You could just paint the, the effect of light. But if it needs to be three dimensional, then you know, you, you have to go in and say, okay, well, the, you know, I have to describe a nose. What is a nose, you know, made of, you know, it's a top plane, side plane, uh, under plane, and it, you know, and it, it's a top plane right here, top, you know, side plane right there. And so you, and you have to look at the reference and analyze it to try and find that information, information that you could use in order to explain uh, uh, that to the viewer. So that that's where the that's why it takes so long because the information is not as clear. So you have to look harder and longer for it. And you have to kind of weed out a lot of like misinformation uh, that might exist because of a reference. Yeah, that, that's a great point. Cause it's like sometimes the reference is gonna look strange and you have to fall back on your knowledge of form and, and edges um, because I don't know, you know, sometimes the reference just looks weird or so if it doesn't look right, you just fall back on how you understand form and it doesn't have to look exactly like the reference because you're probably doing something that's that's going to be correct, like turning a form the right way. And if you can exaggerate those techniques, it's going to look right. It doesn't have to look exactly like what you're painting. I mean, I, I think like Predator is a really great example of that because there's not many like it's in the jungle and it's really a lot of it's filmed with like diffused light. Uh, mm -hmm. And there are some spots where like you get a strong light source here and there, but you know, in order for me to like, I'm doing this like dappled effect on like, as if there's trees hitting the, the head coming through, I had to kind of look at multiple references to kind of understand how the light would hit the head. And I know where like the planes of the head are, but, um, I then had to like kind of put that into my reference so I can get that that effect out uh, of uh, of it in Photoshop, you know. So I, I mocked it up uh, so that that would that would be the case. But again, sometimes you have to. That that's why a lot of uh, you know artists uh, who are doing are really great at like portraiture. They use multiple photographs, you know, because 
maybe you need a certain type of light or need to understand how light hits a, a certain part of the form in one angle, you know, uh, but you don't know, you're not familiar with the form. So you have to look at it from different angles to see where those plane changes are at. Yeah, and there's, um, and especially with like Predator reference, most of the actors have um, camouflage paint on their faces, which is like right. specifically designed to break up the form so that it's hard to recognize. So there's an even extra challenge of the fact that like, you know, in a lot of those references we were looking up from the movie, you'll see like they put like dark paint on their cheekbones, which is supposed to be lighter, you know, because it's a protruding form. So it's catching more light, but they're making that darker. So the, the reference can be really confusing. And um, that's something just to watch out for if you're going to uh, be painting from these kinds of photos. Would you guys mind sharing your the reference that you're painting from? If oh, sure. It's easy to grab. Mine's yeah, taped up it. here. Yeah. I kind of, I'm, I'm oh. bringing it over so you can see it. Uh, it's, it's just like one of the shots from the movie, like looking up at the predator. Um, and I've kind of adjusted it here, uh, adjusted the colors and, but, you know, to get more of the colors I want to be painting with. I made a few adjustments um, in value shifts and stuff like that. And I'm probably not even going to stick that close to it because I'm I'm using very limited palette here. I'm just using Viridian, which is a bluish green, um, Alizarin Crimson, which is like a red that's slightly towards violet. Um, and I'm using lemon yellow and then black and white. So th that's it. <laughs> Okay, so just so you know, Ray, all we can see on the live stream is Arnold's sweaty forehead turned slightly, <laughs> turned 90 degrees. Are you trying to put the reference in there? I love what's happening right now. Sweaty foreheads, this, special this effects. Is, this is a lot of video. Sorry. Oh, there we go. There we go. There he is. There's the lad. Perfect. Arnold. Thank you. So there's my reference. And there, I finished my painting, Tyler. Oh, it's done. Nice. It's, it's well photographic. Done. Very well done. <laughs> yeah. There's a story behind you. this reference, folks. And uh, we people need to look this up because if yeah, you it's remember pretty sweet. a video game from the 80s called Contra, if you if you pull up the, the cover art for the, the game, box art, you will see that whoever whatever, whoever the artist was used two shots from Predator and then they just re they painted the faces differently but it's just straight out of Predator so and it's it's pretty much this shot that Ray is using as well where he's kind of hunched over and he has his vest on um, but check out Contra the the box art and you'll see it oh my god the Contra box art it, it's like yeah oh my god the, one of the greatest games ever <laughs> <laughs> used reference for one of the greatest movies ever. It's it's hilarious. They did it's, it right. It's so they great. did it right. And they, they didn't get sued. I don't know how they didn't get sued for for that. I guess you know they changed the heads. I guess it was enough. Yeah, I mean like the uh, I saw there's this uh, YouTube uh, documentary on the guy who did uh, a bunch of stuff for Konami. Yeah, uh, all yeah. of like the. Uh, did you see that one? Uh, that no, was like the, no. He's an artist. He did. Uh, so he did uh, Castlevania, uh, Dracula's Curse. Um, yeah, totally. Awesome. The third one and like uh, all these great ones. He got sued for using uh, reference that he changed up, but was like grabbed the main pose from from NHL from an NHL uh, player, and what? Uh, had to pay, had to pay thousands of dollars. So yeah, back in the eighties. Oh wow! Isn't that crazy. Isn't it that? And they and, from, oh, go ahead, go ahead. No, and then they talked about they talked about how uh, the Contra guys, you know, they stole it direct. They lifted it directly from Predator, and nothing, nothing happened. <laughs> yeah. Oh, jeez. I, I remember you mentioning something about some artist painting a crowd scene. Oh, like Bernie from, Fuchs. Yeah. Yeah, yeah from Bernie a Fuchs. sports thing, and it, some person could recognize themselves in it. Yeah, the dude. So ridiculous. The 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 guys uh, 
So Bernie Fuchs was this really super famous illustrator back in the 50s, 60s, and 70s, and probably 80s, one of the great illustrators, American illustrators. Um, and he uh, got sued because a, a, a guy had uh, sued him because his wife was flipping through a magazine, which was like the one of the number one you know forms of media at the time, um, and noticed an ad for like, and it was like some liquor ad or something like that. And he, she recognized it was like set at a, a, a racetrack and she recognized her husband at the racetrack. <laughs> and Incredible. apparently <laughs> their husband had a bad gambling problem or something like that and, and swore that he wasn't going to the racetrack. He was going somewhere else. And so <laughs> she saw, she saw him, you know, like that was you at the racetrack, you know? And, and so he sued Bernie Fuchs and, and Bernie Fuchs had to pay up. Isn't that crazy? Wow. For out outing him for going to the race. I guess outing him. I don't know. For lying to his wife. I'm not sure. <laughs> oh, that's just crazy. How would yeah. you even catch something like that? I don't know. I think I've seen it too. And it's like, who knows? He was super famous at the time too. So it was like easy to go after him. I don't know. But yeah, so Contra Man just swiped it directly from it. It's yeah. kind of awesome. And they changed a couple of things. So in school, we were taught, like, if you changed how much of it again? Uh, Bill kept saying 25%, which yeah, is if you've changed so arbitrary, 20, right? 25% of a reference, then it's kind of fair use. And so you won't get sued for it because, you know, when you're using references, it's for, I mean, this stuff right here is like a one-off fan art stuff, right? But if you use it yeah. for like, uh, if I use this for a, uh, you know, a campaign, I don't know, uh, uh, an, an ad or something like that. Uh, and uh, we, I didn't have, you know, uh, permission uh, to subscribe to use Arnold Schwarzenegger's likeness because all this stuff is licensed and you got to pay for it for the right of the, uh, the permission to do this. Uh, I, I would get sued for it. And so uh, Bill Mon, who we never uh, really mentioned on this show. Yeah, um, I don't think we talk about him too often. Uh, had uh, had told us if you change twenty five percent, you should be okay. Now I found out later. Uh, I was watched. I was listening to a podcast. I think it, I forgot which podcast it was. It might have been called the Savvy Painter Podcast. Uh, is a woman by the name of Antrice Wood. Um, might have had someone on, but I, I think it was. I think it was Antrice Wood. But she had had a lawyer, an actual copyright lawyer, and she had put the whole like you know. It wasn't 20, I, uh, for her, it was like 35% or something like that, or 25%. And and the lawyer said, it's like, is there anything like that? And the, the copyright lawyer said, no, there's no such thing. If they could spot it, <laughs> you're going to get sued, you know, so yeah. don't use it. <laughs> you can always argue, right? Yeah, yeah. So it's like, there's no such thing uh, that was just made up. So, so Bill lied to us. Bill, you lied Great. to us. Great. Now we're all sued. Yeah, I know. For all the things we've ever used. Okay, I'm going to have to change my camera setup here. I keep running into it. And that's not going to be good for my time lapse. Oh, my God. Okay, I forgot to record mine again. We got, um, did you do one? You did a time lapse of your um, Wild Herp, right? Or no? No, uh, no, just from the stream because I forgot again. Okay. I, I think okay. I have one of the um, of my Doc Holiday, so we'll be able to put that up at least. No, if you can't put, if I can't put mine up, then you can't put yours. <laughs> yep, that's the rule. Oh, okay. All right. Fair enough. All right. What's our next question? There was. Someone earlier who was asking, I think it was EJ Manuel asking uh, Ray when painting alone. Uh, do you? It's probably EJ Manuel, huh? Uh, e, Ray, when painting alone, do you play any music in the background? If so, what types? Ray only for this question. I don't. I don't like music. <laughs> do you? Do you paint in silence, Tyler? Dead silence. Really? No. Uh, okay. <laughs> no. I'm always listening to something. Katie, what did you sing? Like... 
Yeah, when he right. when he TMI on that one. Yeah, for the yeah, chat, if you want to keep. No, it's good if you want singing. To it's really good singing. Dial it back a little bit on the on the on the personal information. <laughs> I listen to mostly podcasts and I listen to, eh, it depends. Sometimes I like jazz. Sometimes I like uh, rock and roll. Sometimes I like anything, basically. I'll get into uh, uh, a uh, musician and then, you know, uh, and I use him as almost like a creative uh, creative mentor, you know, and um, so I'll tend to listen to their music to kind of help inspire me to do something great. Uh, and so sometimes it's Miles Davis if I want to feel like courageous and pushing myself. Other times it's, you know, it's uh, Prince, you know, or Rick James or, you know, mm. it's awesome. Thelonious Hell yeah, Rick it James. All depends. ACDC, I don't know, D.O. Uh, Too old to run. Anything. Johnny Cash. We do a lot of Johnny uh, Cash over here in this house. Do you do a lot of Johnny Cash? Johnny yeah. Cash is great. Yeah, I like I like anything wanna, that's good. Do you want to tell them about our karaoke story, Tyler? Do I? <laughs> or do you? Uh, yeah, I'll tell them. So uh, Tyler is petrified of karaoke. Uh, I'm yeah. not the biggest fan of it, especially not public karaoke. I like private room karaoke just fine. Because everybody's screaming. Real karaoke? No way, because yeah, real karaoke. Mm, but in a big, yeah. in a big, massive room, it is very intimidating. However, uh, Tyler and I really like Johnny Cash um, and June Carter, and there's a a song called Jackson, which is a duet between the two of them that we would always sing. And I, we were singing it one night in the kitchen, and I said, Tyler, if we are ever in a karaoke situation and they have this song, which is old. And which is, it's very unlikely that anyone would ever have it. Yes, if we ever is. find a karaoke yeah, okay. bar, we have to do it. We just have to get over Incredibly. ourselves and do it. So, Incredibly unlikely. Okay. Fast forward to Roanoke Magic. Was it Star City Games? Yeah, the, the Star City Games event in Roanoke. Yeah, Virginia. and we went out with some of the other magic artists after to a party and it was at a bar, and it turned out to be a karaoke bar. And lo and behold, they have Jackson by Johnny Cash and Jupiter. Oh my God! Uh, worst, my worst nightmare. Yep, it's all coming. <laughs> oh it's all God. coming true. And so I was like, Tyler, we made a promise. We can't back out. And Tyler I was did. like, Absolutely not. And uh, and so Tried I got him. I got him another margarita, and then I asked him again, and he said, It's not going to happen. You should stop asking. And then his friends got in on it, uh, the other magic artists, and they started feeding him shots of Fireball, I believe it was. Yeah, um, I, oh my I drank God, a Tyler. lot. <laughs> yeah, it was a lot. It was a lot. I, I had to. It was a lot of drinking. Every After every shot of Fireball, I was like, I'm putting more names in. And he was like, nope. And then uh, I did it anyway. And he had a few more shots of Fireball. <laughs> and then we got up and we did the song and frankly uh, crushed it. <laughs> but the worst part of this is that someone, one of the artists took a video of the whole thing, which I think should be illegal. Like, I don't, I don't think, unless you're on a show where you've, you have consented to, like, I'm an actor, I'm going to act like I'm doing karaoke, then that's fine to film someone in that situation. But no one should ever be filmed doing karaoke. No, yeah, that should be yeah, an ephemeral yeah, 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 yeah. experience that no one is allowed right. to partake in after the oh, fact. You should go to prison. You should go to prison for I a long time. I think you should time. go to prison. Um, I've written some strongly worded Damn. letters, but I haven't heard back. Anyway, yeah, uh, <laughs> a, there's a video. It's a broke it. pack, you know? Yeah, it's, I, he sent it to us. We have it, but I haven't watched it because I don't want to see it. I never, I never want to revisit the memory of having done karaoke. The end. Yeah, um, th this whole story is true. Um, she didn't lie once during telling it. And <laughs> I was not happy with the scenario, I'll tell you. Um, but we nailed it. We did an amazing job, amazing performance. Um, and no one will ever get to see the video. Yeah, it's never coming out. Hey, question from the chat from 
Corbin Hubler, what are your favorite brush brands? Ooh. Uh, Ray's going to have see. a better answer than me on this. I have, uh, so I like Robert Simmons brushes. Um, I like uh, these uh, Princeton uh, round summit brushes. I don't know if it, it's all messed up, but they're synthetic ones. I really like those. Um, I know there's artists that swear by rosemary brushes, uh, especially for oil paint. Uh, for acrylics, they're really rough on brushes. So I like the, the, the summit brushes for oil paints because they're a little bit softer uh, for acrylic paints. And then I also use them for oils as well because uh, I, I find myself liking, the way I paint is, is uh, I guess it allows, it's a little bit softer at, at that point by the time I switch to oils that it, it's just nice to work with. But I've, I've used all, all types like Escada brushes are great. Uh, um, Never really liked uh, Winsor Newton's artist grade brushes uh, because they, when I bought a pair, a bunch of them, I just, as a whole set, I, they all fell apart. Oh, now they're, they're never going to sponsor line. us. Good damn it. Robert. I know. I'm sorry, Winsor oh, Newton, but your better Winton product. Line, the, Winton, the Winton line, the Winton line, right, uh, was the cheaper student grade ones were great. I love those. Uh, but uh, I think that one of the creme de la creme of brushes uh, is. Uh, I hear nothing but awesome stuff about rosemary uh, brushes. So, hmm. um, and and Trakel, uh, uh brushes as well. They're they're apparently really good too. Um, I'm actually what about you? I'm pretty I'm pretty happy with the the Utrecht ones. I, that's the ones I go with. Um, but yeah, we use I, a, we we used to use that in school, right? A lot. I mean, a lot of yeah, the, the uh, instructors use these. Yeah. They're they're great. They're synthetics. Um, yeah. I like the flats that they make. They they clean up real nice. They're they're soft. Um, I also like these. Um, they're called Connoisseur Pure Synthetics. I like these as well. They're they're more like closer to a hog hair brush when it comes to like stiffness. Um, but yeah, those those are kind of the two that I use. If if I'm doing like really fine stuff, I have a whole bunch of these Princeton. Um, what are they called? Velva Touch. They're just these really the tiny touch. ones for like really tiny fine work. I don't know if you've seen them, Ray. They're good. No, I don't think so. What, what, what's the color of the handle? It's red and they're like short. They're almost like miniature brushes. Oh, wow. Oh, yeah. I've seen those. Yeah, 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 yeah. They're yeah. really, they have like lots of really, really tiny zeros and stuff. But they make a few like bigger filberts that are pretty good too. Can I tell you a karaoke story that I've been to make you Please. feel better, Tyler? Don't hold it back. Yes, one time, please. one time I was in a, 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 a this awesome pizza place in Tacoma, Washington. Um, it, it's uh, what was it called? Uh, Tyler, you actually remember? You it's called. It was like an '80s uh, themed. Um, yeah, it's in. Oh, yeah, it's I remember either, no, it's in Olympia. In Olympia. Oh Olympia, yeah, or, um, old school. Old school. Old school. Good. Yeah, it's incredible place it's like uh, what what, a new york school? style pizza i was years ago before before you uh i think early on in, in grad school actually and oh. so uh, a good friend of mine's lived in in that area and, and lived in tacoma and so um we had went to old school uh and they had karaoke and i was like uh and we you know they were dr drinking beer and stuff and i got up on stage for rapper's delight with a whole bunch of random people <laughs> that we were like hanging out with yes. and i and everyone was doing like a, a a part and i realized when i got to my part that i knew about three of the 300 words in the rap and i just basically mouthed it and everybody was so drunk that they didn't care, you know, because I and, and I just gave it enough attitude that everybody thought I nailed it, except for my friend who was yelling like, he doesn't even know the words. He doesn't even know the words. <laughs> oh, that's a good friend while you're doing karaoke. And yeah, yeah. And someone's just ribbing you the whole time. Yeah. <laughs> so I had a, I, I wish there was like, a deal with that. I think one of the few times I've done karaoke, it was like a Weird Al Yankovic song. And I was like, oh, I know everything. And then as soon as the spotlight was on me, <laughs> I forgot all the words. And, you know, I obviously Listen, I just read them, but I didn't. <laughs> no, you got it. <laughs> which, which song was it? Was it Living with the Hernia? Because that's... Oh, my friend, it was Amish Paradise. 
Oh, wow. Oh my God. That's, that's, yeah. that's high level. Uh, Classic. Out, man. Hey, no, I, I, from yeah. Simmer Attack, any art schools on the East Coast that you know of that you would recommend for, uh, and there's a clarification, basically want to do the same thing as Tyler, fine art, fine art illustration and concept art. Um, I know a lot of people who went to uh, Rhode Island. Um, RISD? Yeah, Rhode I think that's still a, a great school. Um, New York too. What, what's it? The the um, I know Chase Stone went to the school in, in Manhattan. What's it called? He did. Yeah, Sarah went there too. My friend Sarah Winters. She went there. I forget the name of it. Was I think it she went there initially or... for. Um, I'm not sure. F I. It was an F I T Parsons or Pratt or. I think it was Pratt. Okay. I could be completely wrong, um, but. You probably that's great i know a few people who went to pratt as well um i think uh jeremy jarvis and i think steve bellman went to pratt yeah um there's savannah too which is pretty good from what i've heard yeah ringling you know but i you know i'm gonna be honest i don't I don't know if I would recommend going, spending that much, at, uh, spending all the money to go to art school. I mean, of course, it's totally up to you. I just think that like your money could probably better else. If you wanted to become a professional artist, I think having a, uh, you know, the ma main thing is having a really great portfolio and, and, and that's it. Like, I mean, Tyler, how many times have you uh, been asked about your Here. degree? <laughs> I was you know, going to never, like, but I was about to say like yeah. how many times have I steered people away from art school? Many. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, like, I don't want to, we love our art school, obviously, and we talk about it all the time, but um, I right. think times have changed so significantly since we went to art school that nobody needs to pay that amount of money to no. get a good art education. There's so many tools out there now um, and online courses like schoolism, stuff that Bobby Chi is doing. There's just, yeah. There's a lot going on that you don't necessarily need to go to a formal art school. I, I, I would do some like, I would try, I think your money's better spent just getting, go, going to like a, a you know, a, getting a decent like liberal arts education where you learn about history and, and, and things like that. And then uh, sp spend your money training with artists and like, uh, either ateliers or like in places like, uh, you know, Visual Arts Passage or like uh, mm -hmm. IMC, the Illustration Masterclass or uh, Smart, Smarter Art School, like really, really good uh, artists, you know, uh, and just do your homework on, on instructors and things like that. I honestly think that if you do that and then, you know, when you can get in person, you know, take a workshop or something like that and build your knowledge like that, I think that would... I think that would be a better, again, I mean, just do whatever you want. I think, you know, things like Ringling are, are, are great. I mean, you have George Pratt, John Foster's over there in Ringling. I mean, rizzi has got a bunch of, you know, uh, people. I, I, again, I'm not familiar about, uh, you know, uh, a, a lot of them, but I, I just know that they're really expensive too. So, um, and again, Tyler and I went to an art school, but I, you know, I don't know, Tyler. I mean, would you, I wouldn't change a thing. Seriously, I wouldn't, I wouldn't change either. a thing. I definitely but wouldn't. And I don't, I wouldn't, I don't think I would go to art school if I, if I were going today. I, I don't know. I don't think I would, to be honest, yeah. because there's so many, so many, so much more resources. I mean, like, God, to get somebody painting on a video for us in school was like, we would, remember we were trade videos. I mean, we were on like the onset of all this stuff, but like, we would like all pitch in to buy a video and then like, uh, Cause they were really, they were, they were expensive, you know, at least for us, they were, you know, and hundreds of damn hard hundred to dollars, find, they were hard to find. And, you know, and I, I, we'd go to a li our library and uh, in the school and I, I would just take out a bunch and just view them and take notes down and stuff like that. And like, uh, it was just so hard, but now, now it's nowadays it's not, I mean, I mean, look, I mean, we, we have this, this live show, I would have killed to have seen something like this, you know, uh, when, when uh, I was studying, I, I would just love to have seen somebody, you know, professional artists actually 
paint because it was just something I was starved for. Um, so, yeah. I, well, I, I remember uh, we had like, we had those, our school provided all these demos and we right. would just, um, like we would, we'd, there was like a, it was a weird pathway, I remember on the website to try and find them. If you were a student, you could access them. And right. we just downloaded them all because they were just, it was like, oh, wow, there's like other courses that we can't take, but we can at least watch the videos. Um, right. Yeah, you go to the library we like also. For it. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, like a bunch of us would go to the library and take them out, but you couldn't take them out uh, of the library. You'd have to sit and watch them. And so we just download them in our laptops and then, you know, burn them all, in, all c on CDs, like tons and tons of CDs for everyone else. It was just. God, I wish I still had some of those. Actually, right. I think I've lost them all. I might, I might have some. Yeah, man, send them my way. Just for the benefit no. of our VOD squad on YouTube, I'm going to read some of the chat um, out on this topic because I think it's really valuable. Um, yeah. yeah. Aaron Rufino says, as a Fredonia grad, Ray and one other professor are pretty much the only reason it was beneficial to me. But uh, she says, I'm really happy with the online program Visual Arts Passage, which I believe, Ray, you're, you're also teaching for. Yeah, this is uh, full disclosure. Yeah, I'm teaching a course in November in head painting, but uh, I'm, you know, I would recommend them even if I weren't teaching. I'm a gigantic fan of all of those. I mean, those teachers are incredible. They're legends. They are all the teachers from the Illustration Academy. And mm -hmm. I mean, Tyler knows them. You know, I mean, they're like, I mean, CF Payne, Anita Kuntz, Gary Kelly. I mean, like John Foster, George Pratt. They're legends. Ted, Ted Kinsella, Sterling Hundley, John English. I mean, they're all, you know, and, and they have even better, they have even more people. Wesley Burton teaching, I, I think. Oh, really? Uh, where he was, yeah, I think Wes is doing, Wes he is did some demos awesome. for them. And um, Audrey Benjaminson, Vanessa Del Rey. I mean, they're all like associated with that stuff. So uh, I, I would definitely recommend that. And you have like another, again, I, I full disclosure, I do teach for uh, them, it's all new for me this semester, but I would recommend them regardless. A smarter art school, you have um, people like Donato Giacola, Sam Weber, Greg Manchus, uh, Winona Nelson, uh, Rebecca oh, Gay, you know. Awesome. Oh yeah, yeah. And, uh, you know, uh, just like incredible, uh, just incredible uh, resources. So I, I would, I would explore those options because they're much more affordable than they go into a, a four-year art school too, you know? I mean, it doesn't provide you the, the, the curriculum in the fact, you know, it, it, they do have curriculum and everything like that. It just doesn't, the thing it doesn't do, and this is why I say like get into the habit of maybe like every so often getting an in-person thing is get the hands-on, um, you know, point where someone's grabbing a brush from you and, and um, painting, painting it. But again, technology's helped uh, mitigate that quite a bit. I mean, I'm, I'm painting over people's work all the time, you know, digitally uh, to make, make stuff. And, you know, there's, there's Watts Atelier is another place. I mean, like, you know, uh, oh, Tyler, yeah. you did a workshop there at, at, at uh, right at boot camp with them. Yeah, that uh, was, Watts. Uh, yeah. It was like first week in January. Um, which in San Diego is really, really nice. Um, so it was nice to go down. And um, I, I did it. It was Michael Hayes, um, Eric Geist, and Lucas Graciano. So we all yeah. kind of ran this workshop for a week. And I was like the guest artist. They do it every year because they teach there. Um, right. But it was super fun. And it's just a great way to get sort of a crash course in illustration, essentially. So yeah, and to get that hands-on thing that we said, like um, that is, I, if I had to say, there's one valuable thing you'll get from a traditional art school education is that hands-on thing. But there are right. there are plenty of opportunities to find that all over the place. Hey, uh, I got another question from Avidity in the chat. How has art been to you in terms of income and making a living off of it? And how long did it take you from getting out of school to make a livable wage? Oh man, it's ups That's and downs. Um, I guess it's different for everyone. I started getting little tiny bits of D&D &D work. I'd say six or seven months out of school. 
Yeah, that's right. I'm trying to remember exactly. Um, but I don't think I made like a livable wage for a few years. Just kind of scraping by with those little jobs. Yeah, it, it took it, it took me it took me a while. I mean, I, I started getting little work like around six, seven months out of school as well. And um, but, you know, I changed the, the direction of my work, too. I mean, I changed up a couple of things and decided to go from like doing collectible card game stuff to like more uh, magazine stuff. And then from magazine, like magazine and uh, theater posters and advertising stuff. And then from that to, to predominantly gallery work, you know, and um, it kind of all depends, right? It's, it's, it's like, we, we were talking about this uh, a couple of episodes ago where we were talking about all these awesome artists and talking about how like, how great they are and how, you know, like, uh, I don't know, Thomas Blackshear or like uh, uh, Drew Struson and, you know, yeah. uh, where, where they had to like movie posters, for instance, right? Like, wow, so awesome. But like, you know, I, if you wanted to do movie posters for a living, I'm not sure you would make the, you know, you're not going to make the same amount of money that Drew Struson was making back in, when movie posters were the main driver of advertisement and one of the major drivers of advertisement for, for movies, you know, it's, so it all depends on, your interests uh, and, you know, uh, you have to just study the, the market. And if you do have a, an interest that maybe might be a little bit niche, it might take a little bit of time for you to build an audience for it, but it's completely possible. And then also as an artist, you have to think, you're an entrepreneur, so you have to think about, you know, multiple streams of income as well. And, and don't, don't think of just one place um, for, for, for your income, you know, if you're, being an, if you're an independent artist, you know, and it's, it just, it's important to diversi diversify as much as possible because like Tyler's saying, there's a lot of ups and downs. Um, yeah, you gotta, you gotta be prepared for those ups and downs because they can happen. Yeah. I think when I first got out of school, I ran, I ran into Greg Manchas in Portland or something and he was like, yeah, some days, some years it's nothing, don't make anything. And then some years you make like five times what you thought you'd ever make. So it's, it's just, ups and downs you have to be prepared for. I've got another question from Splintersmith. Do you find it beneficial to practice other art forms slash mediums? E.g. could messing around with sculpture give you any insider experience that would be useful in 2D artwork? Or is it just way better to focus on specializing? And do you do any other kinds of art even just for fun? Um, I, I mean, love sculpture. Tyler. And, oh, and karaoke, apparently. And karaoke. I'm a master at it. I'm so good. <laughs> no, but I, I mean, I, to answer that seriously, I guess is I love um, sculpture and I don't do as much of it as I want, but um, it's such a great way to inform your, your view of like how you perceive forms in the 2D yeah. space. So totally. um, I highly recommend doing some kind of sculpture, learning about sculpting anatomy um, highly recommend that because it's just it's so useful it goes such a long way this is like a great example of like I, I think like as a student uh it's just to kind of tie it into our other question about the art school thing like as a student you have to I think Tyler and I both realized really early on in school especially when grad school we that we had to take uh, responsibility for our own education Right, and so we studied with the, the teachers that gave us what we were looking for, uh, and we were very specific about that. And um, you know, so you can take, you know, I think taking a, a so don't depend on nowadays. You don't have to depend on one school for giving everything to you either, right? And so yeah. like you can take a you could take a bunch of of classes and composition and things like that, maybe from you know an online art school or or whatnot. And then let's say you, you, you live in the East Coast, so let's say you live in New York, you'd always go down to like Grand Central Atelier and take an ecrochet class, where oh. you literally sculpt, you know, uh, for that. Sure, they don't teach concept art, but they teach ecrochet, they teach anatomy, uh, you know, artistic anatomy, and they teach it probably as good as anyone else does. And so you have that, you know, that ability uh, that you have, and you can integrate it right back into your work. Um, so yeah, yeah it informs I, I, a lot. 
Yeah, I, I totally, um, I totally encourage everyone out there to like take an egg crochet class. Or something like that. Just it informs so much about everything you do that you can you can just take you know like a concept art class. That's great, but um, learning all kinds of different disciplines just informs your art and makes it better. All right, so I am working on my background here, trying to get these values uh, uh, in place. To be honest, I like to work all of my value changes and everything like that in as much as possible in my reference in Photoshop. I like to mock everything up so that I have everything in front of me. Um, so all I need to do is focus on the act of painting. But in this case, I actually, uh, and you often, this will often happen. You'll find that there's other things that, eh, you know, you, you would like to see and you didn't anticipate it until you actually got into the painting. And in this case, I'm, I'm going to try and experiment with the idea of getting a little bit of atmospheric perspective on, uh, on this jungle here, uh, which means that, you know, uh, as things go further away in distance wise, um, if you're dealing with like a distance in, in, in the scope of like miles, right? Uh, or, you know, hundreds of meters, right? Uh, for all you uh, regular folk, I guess. Uh, What's a meter? Uh, <laughs> it's like, uh, and um, it's like eight miles. Right? It's like, yeah, I was like, I was hoping I used it right. I'm like, I used that right, right? <laughs> so, yeah, that Eminem uh, you... movie, Eight Mile, was called Meter Overseas. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> but no that's good oh i mean you're about to talk God. about atmospheric perspective right like this is i don't know what i'm about to talk about anymore i just, just got, get back into it incredible <laughs> marshall mathers in meter one meter one cubic <laughs> meter do, 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 do. yeah oh god so what the hell is I say? Oh yeah, so as things, you know, usually when you want to show uh, something is, you know, further away, you, and, and it's only like a couple of inches, so you deal with a couple of feet, you make things dark and you want things to come forward, you make things lighter. So light advances in dark receipts, but with atmosphere, with landscapes and distances over great, you know, uh, lengths of distances, distances um, that doesn't work. It's actually the complete opposite because atmosphere uh, it plays a role in it. So actually, the when you do, when you look at a landscape, let's say you're sitting in the field and looking at a piece, of, you know, a set of trees that are maybe a mile away. The further something is, the lighter it is, and the closer some, uh, the darker something is, the closer it appears. Uh, so uh, if you want to have uh, depth uh, in in your pieces, you can uh, and you, uh, you want to show that atmosphere. Uh, you can try and mess around with that. So that's yeah, what I'm trying to do with, with, with this. It's such a challenging concept because it's, it's the opposite of how you learn how to paint, you know, portraiture and right. um, it gets real tricky and you kind of end up, you like kind of end up using the same disciplines, but within the shape. So like if you have a bush that's close, right. you want it, the shadows to be darker, but then you're still using the same principles of of what you'd use in a portrait just in that shape but then any shape that's right. further back you, you have to adjust everything yeah so you're you're basically like you would when you learn light advances and dark proceeds it's to learn how to we were taught that in order to instruct us on how to deal turn form with with paint and how to give the illusions of three dimensions on a two-dimensional surface but then when you add atmosphere you've you've got a, it's another layer of complexity where like the further something is distance wise if you have two trees right they might be the same size and shape but if you want to show one tree is 10 miles away from the other one uh you use atmospheric perspective uh to do that so you would make it lighter versus darker so many things oh, to who, track. Taught us, who taught us that who taught us that i don't know <laughs> some guy film on uh, <laughs> Hey, I don't here's, know. Here's a question from Corbin Hubler. I've seen a lot of illustrators use liquid in their oil paintings, but I think I've heard that liquid yellows the painting over time. Do you know if that's true or not? It may be true. Um, this is a funny, we, I think we've talked about this a few times. The thing is, liquid is great, and I use it all the time. 
if you put it on like super thick with almost no paint in it, it is probably going to yellow. I mean, it yellows yes. in the friggin' jar. But and it's not recommended. It, yeah. But if you're using it sparingly, um, it's not going to yellow. It's just, it's, it's pretty solid, pretty good stuff. But I, I have no idea how it's going to last, you know, 100 years from now. So um, at least while you're alive, I don't think it's going to yellow on you. Yeah, it's, it's the, the great, the answer a lot of this is no one knows yet. Everyone can, you know, uh, it's not designed to fail, uh, but, you know, if you, you don't cut it with some paint, you know, or use it too thickly, you know, and you paint over it when it's not fully dry or cured, I mean, that could cause stability issues, but that's not the fault of the medium. Uh, in terms of yellowing, oil paints yellow naturally anyway you know if you if if they go without sun sunlight and so uh if that happens you just bring it outside and expose it to direct light and that, that'll usually correct it yeah if you store it in the dark it's probably going to yellow but bringing it out and it it's kind of magical it on yellows it's pretty cool yeah question from eric davisheim who do you think wins in a head-to-head -head matchup, Predator or Boba Fett? <laughs> oh man, you know I was. It's, this is this is the great. This is no, I don't I don't know. Hold on, I don't know. I don't know that. <laughs> I I think it's oh. Predator. My money's on the Predator. Do you Come think on. it's Predator? Yeah, I know. Yeah. Mm, they're both trained to hunt, though. I don't know. <laughs> This is one of those like who's going to win fly, Darth Vader though. or Ab Captain Kirk? Yeah, yeah. well, the Kirk, it's the great Kirk. Yeah, I was just going to bring it up. It's the great Kirk versus Vader debate, you know. And like I was like, no, no question, Vader will win. But then our, our no. good friend Eric Johnson, Eric Johnson would be, uh, you know, convince me otherwise. He, he he turned me. He said like, no, Kirk would would appeal to Vader's like humanity, and that's how he would win. It's true. Like so he think did about your son. every episode, he, you are an error. He, he always got the robot by saying it was yeah, an error. error. One. He, yeah. He, he, uh, why, why are we, we should be talking about Predator. He fought a universe killing robot. Okay. What are yeah. you doing in your life? Well, we did ask. Uh, and mind you, you still don't like, you still don't like Kirk. I, this is why this is why the the well whatever i'm a predator we'll talk about you know we'll talk about that when we do some hey, star treks i don't like kirk because he's not patrick stewart that's why that's all that's all <sighs> god how could you <laughs> i did want to um it, i wanted to talk i mean i know we want to talk about art but i also wanted to um just gush about Predator and how amazing it is. Yeah. And I feel I like we haven't done what, it. A, what about it? It's, you know, uh, what's his face uh, from uh, who wrote Kiss Kiss Bang Bang uh, and did uh, yeah, Iron Shane Man. Black. Shane Black. He did uh, the remake. He, he did a remake. There was two yeah, remakes was that came out. One was, one was, uh, the, was he involved with the, the Robert Rodriguez produced one? I think I'm not sure. I mean, the the latest one called The Predator was the one that he yeah. um, directed. Directed. And, but he wrote right. he wrote the original Predator, or was a co-writer. Shane Black did. Um, yeah, he's a. I think he's a co-writer with somebody else. Okay. Shane Black wrote um, uh, Lethal Weapon for for those of you that don't know. Yes, and uh, Kiss Kiss Bang Bang, which is and Kiss Kiss amazing. Bang Bang, one of my one of my favorite movies. Actually, thanks to Tyler. Don't don't clip that. Uh, no, clip it. Um, let's use that future podcast for our promos. Um, let's make <laughs> uh, let's make a uh, some sort of emoji out of it. I don't know. I feel like an old man. I don't know what's going on in the chat. <laughs> emoji. Hey, emoji. Aaron Rafina oh, wants Jesus. to know what is the best. Now, this is uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna phrase this the way Aaron is phrasing it because it's very specific. What is the best '80s movie poster? Not what is your favorite oh. '80s movie poster. What is? I'm, the well, best I'm going to risk this right now. Ray, do you want to go first, or should I go first? Uh, '80s best '80s poster. 
Uh, go first, Tyler. I, this is gonna be this is an unpopular opinion, but for me, it's it's Drew Struzan's Masters of the Universe poster. Oh my but, God! Yes, for a lot of reasons because the movie is trash. Incredible. But, <laughs> but the poster is so good. It's you look at it and you're like, ah, oh, this movie must have been amazing. And it, and it was. It's it's not. It's super bad. It's, um, but yeah, it's I one think, of my favorites that he did. Man. Dolph Lundgren, like shiny I, I, chest. I, I, Woo. I I argue that Frank Langella's uh, Skeletor was, if that movie were better and successful, he would be remembered just as much as Jack Nicholson in The Joker. There, I said it. No, I agree with you there. His performance as Skeletor was amazing. Um, I'm not going to argue over this, but we don't need to argue about it. No, because we both agree. But I do remember that film being in my memory as a kid, it was amazing. And I, I remember this, there's this battle at the end, like the <laughs> sword, sword versus staff battle. And I remember that being so awesome. And then I watched it when we were in art school and I was like, oh my God, this is one of the worst things I've ever seen in my life. Um, this, it this didn't age well. By the way, we, we, we were like, <laughs> would watch watch movies and like, uh, like when Netflix wasn't was just online was was uh, had DVDs and like mostly they had it online but it was lame, um, and we would uh, we would watch movies you know and so like he got me into uh, I had never seen any of the Star Trek movies and like and so we watched oh, yeah. you know they they, they, they you might know, you know uh, him and you know from Bryce and all these guys like and Eric they all like made sure I watched everything you know all the Star Trek movies and I was caught up and. Battlestar Galactica and all that stuff, but I remember one day Tyler was like, "Dude, have you seen Masters? Of the, you know Masters of the Universe?" I'm like, "Uh, yeah, I saw it in the theaters, man. It was the greatest thing ever." He was like, "Have you watched it?" He's like, "Uh," I was like, "Uh, no." He's like, "I don't know if it's that good." I'm like, "What?" Shockingly aged poorly. And then, and then you pointed out the sword battle, which I remember thinking was the most epic thing I'd ever seen in my life. Yeah, only second, here, sec, second only the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles in Radio City Music Hall. You know. Um, oh yeah. The back in our shell tour, or out of our shell tour, or whatever. That <laughs> yeah, I called. still have that album. It's amazing. Really? It is. Oh really man, amazing. I saw that it's thing really live and, and yeah. Pizza power. Yeah, and, and it gets like it gets real like melancholy, you know, like skipping stones. It's all really bad sewer puns. It's I don't even know how to describe or great it. Sewer puns. Hey, question from Jacob A. Sweet, who apparently was one of your students at the Watts. Oh yeah, Jacob, uh, I remember Jacob. Thing. Great guy. Um, the when you do you try when you already have an, a linear drawing down on the painting, do you try your best to keep the lines visible as long as possible, or are they an afterthought at that point? Um, I'm actually Ooh. trying to keep it pretty visible. Um, I'm working fairly transparent because I'm I'm doing this as like a major block in, so I can paint on it a lot longer than I usually do. Um, so yeah, right now I'm keeping it very visible. I can see. I don't know if you can see it on the camera, but I can see all of the lines um, throughout this image, except for in the dark areas. But everywhere else, I can see all the lines, and I want to keep them there for as long as possible while I build everything up. But I'm just trying to block so, in values and colors, um, and I want to keep the lines there so I don't lose my drawing. Because I'm a cheater. So help me, dude. If you finish this in the next, what is it, 15, 45 minutes, I'm going to lose it. OK? Hey, Chappy McChappy. Trying not to. Chappy Wait, if it's, if, if, but I haven't answered. Or was it up for Tyler? Uh, wait, what was? The, the question about the, of the lines? The oh yeah, drawing. you can go ahead yeah. and answer it, man. Go ahead. No, okay, no, I'm gonna hear you. You heard no. from me. I dare you, I hear from dare me? you to answer that. I dare you to answer that. <laughs> I dare you. I don't know. I mean, I guess go ahead, Ray, but I think I answered it pretty thoroughly. <laughs> First, I haven't answered Aaron's question because since I oh, went yes. off on a rampage. About uh, oh, I'll you know, keep going. Yeah, taking wait. a dump on my one of the greatest movies of all time but whatever that's for another you know what we should do a painting 
of that, oh, by yeah. the way. Tyler. Okay, okay. I was talking too much, but, Ray. You got a bunch of questions. Yeah, but you, so go for it. Okay, so. Start with your movie poster. It's an That's incredible poster. Operation. It's, a, it's an inc incredible poster. I worry, though. Is it better than Temple of Doom? Ah, oh, man. Okay, I I'll, st I'll roll back because I do have to say that Temple of Doom is, is really, really good. Indiana Jones in the Temple of Doom is like... And and his Blade Runner, po his rejected Blade Runner poster is also really good. Was really good, yes. And we, Tyler and I actually saw those those originals in yes. the, uh, uh, whatever the cemetery museum. The Glendale Cemetery. Glendale Cemetery slash art museum uh, in LA, which was like incredible, but like, that's an incredible poster. And that was in it the is. 80s. Uh, I don't know. And like, I can't choose. Don't make me choose. Aaron's making you choose, man. You have to. You already chose. You already chose. I know. Okay, I, did. So, I chose Master of the Universe. I regret my choice right now. How dare you, man? <laughs> Do you like the movie or not? I love it. I love it. It's so uh, these are the, hard questions. They're really throwing hard questions at us today. Okay, go ahead. So you oh, you answered it with oh. a really good poster. Uh, you know? Yeah, and so the second one, the second one about the lines, uh, there's two frames of mine on it. It, it, but don't, don't. I was just gonna say, don't get married to one one type because sometimes you might find that you know if you lose the lines it's not a big deal you can actually refine them refine the forms and by doing that you actually get interesting brushstrokes so you could do that in like landscapes and things like that but if it's something that's super important like a likeness or something you might want to hold on to the drawing as much as you can uh so that you don't have to go back and futz around with like all these proportions and everything like that so that was my answer for that yeah, I, I, I agree with that there too. And it, it's kind of, it goes down for each person, right? Like if yeah. you, if you're the kind of painter that really can't draw with paint, then you want to preserve your line as long as possible. But if you can draw right. great with paint, then you don't, you can lose it. You know, Rockwell was terrified of losing his line because I feel like he must have felt he couldn't really draw with paint. Right. Right. Yeah. I, I, yeah. I, yeah. That, that's a, I would agree with that. But like, you know, like this background stuff, I drew all this stuff out, but like, I don't care about like, if I lose it, whatever, I'll just paint back on top of it. It's not going to, sure. it actually, you know, it'd be better if I do, you know, uh, cause that could really weaken it. You could weaken your painting if you just paint too closely around your, your lines in certain parts in certain instances is what I'm, what I'm getting at, you know? Yeah, it can get and it can get really stiff. You know, you're going to lose your edge yeah. control if you're just if you're if you're using your drawing as like a paint by number thing. Yeah. And Chappie McChapman has been trying to get you guys to answer this question for like an hour. Oh, <laughs> who Sorry, is the who's your favorite supporting character in Predator? Oh, ho, 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 ho. I mean, uh, there's Blaine. Blaine's really good. Um, Ah, this isn't pop. Billy is one of the best, easily. Apparently, that guy. I don't know. If, I don't know if this is apocryphal, but apparently, Billy! that guy was like a real killer. <laughs> and what really? People on the set. You're kidding me. There's a lot so of. So he really see, cut. This is what I did he really to cut? Talk about. Did he actually cut himself? Did he actually cut his chest? When no, he, I think uh... that was one of those like blood knives. I think that was fake. Oh. I'm sorry. Um. Gosh, there's just, everyone's good. They're, the whole crew is good. Oh my Carl God. Carl Weathers is man. easily one of the best Carl Weathers performances of all time. Take that. Kate, Paula Creed. It's not as good as Brad. You yeah. can suck <laughs> it. What? <laughs> yeah, when are we doing Rocky, y'all? Oh, no, oh don't my worry. God. We're saving That'd that. Be great. That would be great. Favorite uh, I think yeah. my favorite supporting character, right. oh, man, I, uh, I think call. it was the chopper. I think yeah, it was the, sure, the sure, chopper, sure. <laughs> you know? The hero, really. I wouldn't even say supporting. The hero, really. Yeah. In the yeah. end. <laughs> In the end. 
<laughs> Spoken like someone who's never seen Predator. <laughs> <laughs> there's a chopper in this right yeah that's cool what was the most what was your favorite character in john steinbeck's the pearl uh i liked the pearl i thought that was a very powerful this is the best part really you really don't have much of an ending if the chopper's not there i'm just saying i like i mean i really liked the, the general guy that was there too at the very end um, that goes two sec yeah yeah it's awesome or the cigar that that uh, Schwarzenegger uh, it somehow keeps lit, like for like yeah an, an entire hour of the movie under a helicopter. <laughs> yeah, oh. so awesome. I like the cold, cold mud. Mm -hmm. Ooh, it's very cold. I mean, the predator. That's all. I, I was thinking right? about. He is a supporting character, the predator. That's my favorite oh one. Oh my god! Jeez. They named you know, the supporting like, character. They named the movie after him. It is about him. Low hanging he fruit, is the alert, protagonist. right? I mean, like, <laughs> f in the chat if uh, you're sick and tired of uncreative answers to your incredible questions. Just can't win over here. I can hear the chat blowing up from here. Yeah, there's a lot of. <laughs> Hey, Tengu Brexo says, speaking of the 80s, are you guys pumped for the Snake Eyes origin movie coming out? Um, I love Snake Eyes. I'm a big G.I. Joe fan, but I've never really liked the movies. There's a Snake Eyes origin movie? There's yeah, a Snake yeah, Eyes they're origin gonna, movie they're Hasbro's out? going big. They're bringing back the G.I. Joe. Oh and I don't know God. if it's the right time to bring back the G.I. Joes. Yeah, I don't know, I don't know, know if this is the right atmosphere we were trying to get them to do a uh, uh this is an internal thing we never actually pitched it but when i was at wizards we were they were talking about bringing back gio joe and uh they i that was like well like what if they're they've got to be like cool freedom fighters or you know on they they fight against like i don't know the united states is just so busted right now like the last thing we need is another propaganda machine so I think I think they'd have to switch the <laughs> politics of G.I. Joe pretty dramatically to make it more palatable. We do need more Dwayne the Rock Johnson movies, though. So that's true. Yeah. That's true. Oh my that's god! Imagine it, a G.I. Joe movie with just all of the biggest boys. Like the, the you get yeah. every single big boy and you try to get them all in one shot. That's the challenge. Like when when are yes. they going to all fit <laughs> on camera at the same? Fast and Furious does uh, it they, pretty they, well. They have done it. They have done it. And they've done a couple of movies, and they're called The Expendables. Okay? Oh, yeah. No, that's true. That's a lot of big boys. <laughs> but I think there's... Probably the best G.I. Joe movie I've ever seen. That's true. They're, they're, I bet they could get bigger boys. Like, they've, they've got some big boys in that, but they oh. also got some small boys. Chuck Norris, not a big boy. Yeah, and, you know, the movie that Chuck was in, like, he wouldn't let them swear and stuff. They called them like Wolf. The one Expendables movie that is, like, rated PG-13. Lame. Yeah. What? The whole yeah. point of Expendables Who let, who, Chuck Norris? Be, like... Yeah, Chuck Norris would. I don't know. If, this is also. I don't know if it's possible as well, but um, he wouldn't allow like swearing, so they had to like change the what? whole rating. The you know the, all the previous Expendables movies were wait. Like, Chuck super Norris hard said R's. no one can ever swear in this. But movie. Chuck Norris, he's yeah, in it for he's like five like a, minutes. He was, he was there for I know, five. Yeah, like five minutes. Two seconds. I know, but trust me. Wait I a second. Crap. That's, Chuck Norris is star of Delta Force, where he's impaled many a people with like you know, uh, like homemade like uh, uh, traps that he had had yeah, set out and, for yeah, like his he enemies. Changed, Christian man. language during it, apparently. He's changed now. Uh, hey, here's a question from Eric Davisheim. I've been commissioned to do a bunch of fantasy illustrations for a card game. Nice. Sound familiar? Yeah. Congrats. Congrats. The illustrations will be a similar size and aspect ratio to Magic. Do either of you have any tips regarding composition for pieces printed that size? Minimum size portraits read at maximum number of figures you'd include. Wait, so minimum size portraits read at, there we go. Maximum number of figures you include before the image becomes illegible, et cetera. So there's a lot of rules here. Um, from, you know, if you look at all the magic cards that were ever done, they all, end up being fairly similar when it comes to composition. Like, you know, swords are always kind of corner to corner. Um, you know, figures always tend to be sort of waist up just because you're dealing with these, this very specific tiny aspect ratios. But 
if I had to give any one like cornerstone thing you have to follow, it's called, it's something we talk about at Magic called figure ground relationship. Um, you want to make sure that the character or figure in, the, in that little tiny two inch box stands out against the background. So the background's the ground and then the figure. So, um, and the way you do that is through like really strong silhouettes. Um, that's the best way to start on those little tiny card shapes is really strong silhouettes. Um, so you want your, um, sorry, I dropped a whole bunch of brushes here. I'm trying to gather them. You want your, um, so like kind of in this predator image, like his silhouette, I'm, I'm trying to force it to stand out against the background. Um, and that ends up being sort of the, the go-to method for designing a magic card most of the time. Um, take a look at Chris Ron's magic cards. He's really, really good at that figure ground relationship. Um, very strong silhouettes, spotlighting. Yeah, totally. So um, that should be your primary focus when you're, when you're doing it because you, they have to read at two inches. So it's essentially anything you're painting needs to read from across the room. Um, so I, I would say that th there's so many pitfalls and things you want to look out for when it comes to painting card art, but um, that's the primary one is that figure ground relationship. And also wouldn't the amount of figures depend on like the, the description you'd get anyway, right? I mean, yeah. Um, yeah. That, that, that's a tough one there. Like how many figures you can put in because you can put in tons of figures as long as you have like a really good strong, figure ground composition, right. but, you know, eventually it's getting into ridiculous if it's super tiny. Um, right. I, ch on most of the images I've ever done, it's like three, three to four is like the maximum amount of figures you can fit into a composition on a magic card. I don't know if that answered all, that was a lot, I guess there, but. Like, in, in the, I guess like individual, right? I mean, cause you can, that's, you know, technically put thousands of figures, but if they were a mass, if it was like a gigantic mass of like crowd, you know, that really read as just a great shape. Then yeah, and if I've it done, reads, I've done reads, that, right? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, as long as it reads as a crowd. And that's a challenge, like getting a big crowd to not read as blob. Um, but, you know, if you look at some of like uh, Jamie Jones magic card paintings, he's done some giant crowds in there and it's just all about you know essentially when you zoom out and you blur it a crowd is essentially a bunch of different pixels it's almost like uh, noise um, so you can make you can suggest a crowd just with like noisy pixels like if you look at craig mullen's paintings he does that quite a quite a bit just like a mm -hmm. blurry pixels um, that suggests a crowd and that's not too hard to do actually on the tiny magic card especially if you're working digitally Yeah, those guys are great. All those artists are so awesome. I'm a fan of, um, I'm a big fan of Jamie Jones. I think since art school, we've been big Jamie Jones fans. <laughs> oh yeah, no question. One of the greats. Craig he's, I too. think he's yeah. still, I'm not sure what Jamie Jones is doing these days, but he did so much work for Bungie. I imagine he's still doing um, Destiny stuff. Yeah, I was gonna say uh, last time I remember he was he was at Bungie, but that was I realized how long ago that was. Well, well yeah, for for Halo and stuff, I think he was there, but he did a lot of stuff for um, the initial launch of Destiny. A lot of their key art, so I'm assuming he's still working with them. Maybe he's freelance now. I don't know. I think I worked with Jamie on Guild Wars Two, actually. Oh, really? Yeah. I think I saw some of his art. On that game as well. So he's so good. It's silly. Why don't we just ask Kate? Ask me what? No, that's next time we'll just ask Kate where someone is because Kate's probably work with them. Uh, where is Jamie Jones yes. now? Uh, it looks like I'm looking at Jamie Jones's website, which is artpad.org. Uh, yes. It looks like just an illustrator and concept art artist working in film. So it's a freelance looking situation. Okay, yeah, I imagine he's doing a, he's probably jumping in on the Marvel stuff too. Right, that's what I, that's what I was going to ask if he had worked with Carla on any of the Marvel stuff with yeah, him, because I know Ryan, Ryan Lang and 
He did some last Jedi oh, Disney, work. Oh, yeah. Disney, um, A lot okay. of last Jedi work, actually. Uh, oh, oh, okay. So Star Wars very stuff. Very cool, cool Star Wars stuff, yeah. Disney getting all the artists. Scooping them up. Yeah, man. It's... You know what I was thinking of, too, when I was thinking of crowds and stuff like that? I mean, even though it's not like... He has, I don't know if he's done work for Magic, but Ryan, Ryan Lang... Yeah, Ryan uh, Lang's awesome. Um, I don't know like, if he's done magic work either. I bet he has at some point, but um, he's super good. Yeah, he went to art school with us and was just insane. Yeah, I never saw him when he was there, but I mean, I saw his work all over the walls. All yeah, the time. yeah, Intimidating. yeah. I mean, did we meet him? No, right? I, I don't think I ever did. I don't think I ever did either. Uh, but yeah. Yeah, he was. It was very intimidating walking in and seeing like people who were still in school that were, you know, doing professional grade stuff. And <laughs> Tyler and I were, you know, walking in with our backpacks full, with our you know Masters of the Universe uh, lunch boxes and <laughs> yeah, Back to the Future hats. Two guys who yeah, two guys are just a dream. You know, just trying to get by. Real excited. Be just trying here. to get by. <laughs> it totally was that, though, right? I mean, like, especially the first year. Oh, my God. Yeah, it was insane. I mean, because the, yeah. the way the school was set up is they had, like, basically all the all the students that had graduated and were, like, getting industry work, their stuff was, like, plastered all over the walls. I don't know if that was meant to demoralize us or to get us excited. <laughs> um that's but called it, an expectation setter, my friend. Yeah, um, it was intimidating. But yeah, I, yeah. for me personally, I, I don't know how everyone else dealt with it, but I was like, that that kind of drove me. That that got me. Oh, thinking, me okay, too. These totally. people have made it. Like they they've made a career right. out of this. It's doable. Right, right, and they've done it here. So yeah. I, I, you know, I, we have a chance. You know. Yeah, it's like that. That was my mean. thinking. Like they've done it here, so I need to learn from everyone here I can find because right. they, they obviously did did that. Man, but you know, Predator, you know, the movie, Predator. How about it? Really good. I huh? know you want you wanted to talk so much about it and then like, you know. <laughs> well, first of all, I have to start with a silly story. Um, we I was on a concept push for magic and usually we were in a big room together and we wanted to watch movies and so we had no like sometimes you try and keep them on theme if it's like a particular set like when we were concepting um ixlon it was their like pirate and sort of mesoamerican inspired with dinosaurs so we watched like jurassic park and like pirate movies and stuff um so i was recently on a push and we just didn't really have we had a theme but we couldn't find any movies that went along with it so i was like well let's just watch predator predator is amazing and i'm trying to find it trying to buy it and I see in like the Google Play Store or whatever, it's like, oh, okay, there's Predators right there. Oh, I'm just going to get it. The Predator. I'm going to get the Predator. And so I buy this movie and I start it. And it's the Predator. It's not Predator. So I accidentally bought the worst Predator movie ever made. And now I own it. And I deleted it from the library so that it would never show up again in there. But I paid like $15. What? The Predator, what was it? Was or that the second the one? Predator. That's the latest one that Shane Black directed. Oh, um, no. With uh, what, uh, uh, the, 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 uh, was it Key? Uh, uh, yeah. Um, yeah, from uh, Key and Peel. He was in yeah, it. Key for, I don't know why. I don't know why he was in it. it just, <laughs> he was like a regular dude. <laughs> Um, there was so many things wrong with it. it. It was there's a moment in the movie, and I don't care about spoilers here because no one should ever watch this. Seriously, um, don't ever go see this movie. Okay, it, there's a moment where there's the, they stop, and there's a whole bunch of motorcycles at the end of the street, and literally yeah. one of the characters says, "Get to the choppers," and I think yes. the whole theater groaned. I'm, I'm almost certain the whole you theater saw it was in like, the oh. theaters, Tyler. Yeah, this was one oh, of yeah. our first dates. Yeah. I was impressing her with like, hey, you're gonna love this movie. It's gonna be really good. Oh my god! <laughs> well, it was Shane Black, right? I mean, let's let's be honest here, right? I mean, like that's what I thought. It's it was like, remember that Dreamcatcher movie? 
yeah like yeah a huge lineup of all these really awesome people really awesome yeah, yeah. you know filmmakers and then it's just a complete stinker yeah yeah Oh well. Actually, I mean, you, you don't have a from, you don't have a good good uh, track record then, because the last time we went to a movie was oh God. I knew this was going to come Jones up. and the Crystal Skull. Oh, and I thought you were going to talk about Flyboys. Oh my God, Flyboys! <laughs> Which I still stand oh. by my review of that movie. You liked it? I don't even remember. No, I said okay. This is like one of Ray and I's first interactions in art school. Yeah, was, we all this, went to this, go see a movie. This fairly crappy movie came out. It was awful, Boys. Tyler. Oh my but god! But it was. It wasn't like. It wasn't like. I don't know. Troll two awful or. You know, just a, a terrible <laughs> B movie. Yeah. It was just a yeah, decent. I still screamed. I still screamed. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> it. <laughs> Old red living media. Yeah. Um, it, it was. It was decent, is right? It, like is that Troll 2? Is it that old truth? It's like Troll 2 is like, they're eating them. And now they're going to eat me. Yeah. Was that Troll 2, right? Please, oh everybody see Troll 2. Um, but anyways, what I was saying is Flyboys, <laughs> not good. Not terrible, though. I mean, it was a decent World War II movie. Um, no. Just kind of silly. Was it? Is it? No, it was World War One. You didn't I mean, even, sorry, yeah, it was World War One, and and I come in. See, that's how I, I bad the class. movie is. You didn't even know which World War it was. <laughs> God damn it! You gotta let me tell this story. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I come into class, and I'm and I'm like, I just went soft fly boys, and I like tell you, Eric and Bryce, and and I was like, yeah, it was, you know, it was good. oh, that's um, right, that's I, right. I, was, you, I, was, you, I shrugged you, it off oh, as yeah, it was interesting, it was good, but I wasn't raving I about it being great. No, right, because you hadn't you seen it with us. See it. Right. Yeah, right. I, didn't, I didn't see it with you guys. Then yeah. you guys go and see it, and they never let me live it down afterwards. They just oh, the ribbon worst. me forever. God, I totally forgot that you had recommended Flyboys. I just, yeah. I don't think I said, hey, I, you guys need to see this. I just think I said, <laughs> yeah, it was, it was interesting. And then they a, they they <laughs> beat me up. You guys you guys gave me shit for years, thinking that I was like, guys, you need to see this Oscar winning performances in this well, Oscar nominated. Kate, just to just to t- just to fill in the chat and Kate about this. When whenever we would see something or come by something that was really crappy we would rate it we would give it a biplane rating yeah based off of flyboys like we're like <laughs> uh, uh, how many biplanes was that? it <laughs> i don't know it's about, about you know 14 and a half biplanes so it's pretty awesome you know it's like flyboys it's pretty good it's pretty good it's pretty good you told me it was a solid movie i i think yeah i think i said like yeah it's it's decent no no you know, it, but you know, you guys didn't know me then, so it was like we didn't know each other. I know. Yet. If if it's a movie that I think is really good, I won't shut up about Wait, it. Wait, so you like, yeah, it's all right. You don't. <laughs> no, you didn't know it, so you you weren't comfortable giving movie recommendations to strangers. So you you gave us this like a false. No, movie no, no. I mean, I'm saying, to, to I'm saying you didn't. I'm saying you didn't know how I would react to a good movie. Did you not like want to hang out with this, Tyler? <laughs> Is this the end of Live Brush? This is it. I finally, we finally got here. I've been, I've been saving this up for ten years to reveal now. So this, uh, <laughs> this movie, by the way, has a thirty-three percent on Rotten Tomatoes. Um, Duh. Yeah. The thirty-three. Critics, critics consensus Great. reads a poorly scripted history rewriting exercise with mediocre acting <laughs> and unconvincing CGI battle scenes. Yeah. So, yeah, I would. Um, so I, was this, this is my uh, point? <laughs> okay, so it was a bad. It was a bad World War One movie. Pretty decent World War Two movie is what you're saying. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God damn it! My point is, if it was a really good movie, I'd have been raving about it the whole class. But my my review to you guys was, eh, it's all right. That that was it. That's like all I said. Eh, it's all right. 
And that was my review. Cool. I just I feel like it, that kind of review wouldn't have compelled people to go see the movie with you. I think I think it was probably I, a little I, bit. And more then and then these jokers. Convincing. Thank you, thank you, Kate. I don't thank know. You, I think you're I think you're backpedaling pretty strongly here, Tyler. Thank you, Kate. Yeah, I'll never thank live you, it down. Kate. I'll never be able to live it down. Fucking fly boys. Chat, forever. chat, chat, chat. How would you uh, in in you know how many uh, biplanes would you give Tyler on his uh, revisionist? Uh, History recreation reenactment yeah, of this. Yeah, I'd go. like maximum four biplanes. You know what? I'm going to lean into it. That, that movie was one of the best movies ever made. And <laughs> that's all I anybody, wanted you to say. Anybody that thinks that's it's not all very I good doesn't really say. know much about movies. <laughs> Listen, we all have those movies, right? I mean, we all have those movies where you're like so dialed in, and you're in, but you're like one of like 30 people in the world that were like. Wow, this this okay, this did something for me, you know. Dude, it wasn't have, like the oh, best, man. but this was awesome. Okay, what I I have one of these, but what is what I have is one yours? of these too. Tell me yours. What uh, is yours? Contem- I mean, I have a ton of a, a couple of them, but I think contemporary, the one that will like get people like really raging just to balance things out is Batman versus Superman, Donna Justice. No question. I love that movie. Oh, okay. I thought it was great. Okay, here. I, I have words on that. I didn't think it was. And amazing. you screamed at me. You screamed at me when I I told you. You screamed okay. at me. I don't hate it though. I didn't think it was amazing, but it is. I still think one of the best Batman's ever put on film. Yeah, I agree. It, I agree. I think the I internet mean, got a hold of from it. he like kills people and stuff, but um, he's so good. It's we don't know Frank that. Miller's we don't Batman. know that. It's so good. But the movie, the rest of the movie, I thought was kind of trash. Sorry. Sorry, Ray. Yeah, but Superman was a monster. That's what I loved about it. <laughs> that was good. It's like, like that. Yeah. Oh, my God. Jeremy okay. Irons as, as Alfred. Oh. Yeah. He was good. Come on. I mean, he, okay, he's not Michael Caine, Mr. White, right? I'm like, I get it. <laughs> but, like, he would be the Alfred that it would make sense. Like, he'd be the guy that would, like, you know, repair all of the, do the electronics and it's just him and, oh my God. He's the Alfred we didn't know that we needed, that we right. didn't know we wanted. <laughs> we so my my movie that I think is probably trash that I love is a movie from the 80s called Warlock. Um, warlock. It is exactly what you think it would be. It's about a warlock, um, but it's awesome. It's got Richard E. Grant, like really young Richard E. Grant. Ah. Uh, uh-huh. Everyone go find Warlock. And Jerry Goldsmith did the score, which everyone knows is good. You know it's good. He did good. the score? Oh, yeah. man. All right. Uh, I mean, because, like, let's let's bring it up. One of the greatest, I think one of the greatest uh, Ridley Scott films is the European Legend. version of Legend. And <laughs> there you go. And I don't know Jerry if our producer Goldsmith. is on board with this, but... Well, you know, what? I think it's one of the best scores ever written. And we weren't, we were, we were having fine. an A-B conversation here. Okay. <laughs> Listen, right. I love Jerry Goldsmith and I absolutely don't disagree that his score for Legend is phenomenal. However, but... however, <laughs> the movie doesn't deserve that score. The movie deserves oh. the Tangerine Dream score that it no. got. And that is the only way that movie works. And I will go to my grave defending it. I can't believe it. I can't believe it. I just can't agree. Listen, I got teary-eyed at, like, I sat and watched the European version. And I was so, because Tyler told me to watch, I never watched Legend before. At least I didn't remember it. And and when I I started to see it, I kind of remember. I made you watch both versions. You did. You did. You said, watch the European version first. And then watch the American version second. And I did. I was like, I watched the European version first, and I was like, this is one of the like my this is one of the best movies I've ever seen in my life. Like this is the the visual aspect, like the like taking visual storytelling, like you could have that movie. It didn't need much talking at all. Like it could have been silent. It was yeah. it could have it could have been like with just the score. Oh man. And then Maybe I was like, how bad, how bad could the American version be? I couldn't get 10 minutes dogs, into it. Don't agree with you. <laughs> I know. The, the that dogs Tangerine agree Dream you. is, I mean, I know where Kate stands on this, but it's so rough. It just ruins the whole movie. Excuse it's, me. It, no. 
listen, it is not. It's beautiful and it's cheesy. Yes, it's cheesy and dorky and yeah, but that's the whole movie. That the the movie, the movie legend is one of the goofiest fantasy movies of all time and did not in any way live up to the glorious score. It is such a weird like uh, I don't I don't know the right the it's like it's it's discordant. It's unharmonious. You can see Tom Cruise crouches down so that you can see up his skirt 36 mm-hmm. times in that movie. This is a great moments in the movie. Highlighted you're highlighting great moments. But you see that I think when they re-edited it for the America uh, the 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 non-European release they completely broke apart like they disjointed his curve from going from being like a little boy and you know maturing into an actual adult even down to like how he uh like showed affection to uh what, what's his face's character i forgot her name uh what's her name again sarah Hello, Sarah. Uh, yeah yeah and and like she, but first he was like playful and kind of like you know what this like a little boy would would you know who, who liked the girl they would just like kind of like oh, shove each other and then like run away and then at the end, he was affectionate uh, to her. And I was like, wow, what a beautiful curve. And then I watched the American version. They took that last scene and they yeah. put it in the beginning and they intercut <laughs> it with it. And I'm like, what? And that's when I lost it. And then I shut it off. I called Tyler. He's screaming. And, and, and a tangerine Jamie dream. Was like, what's wrong? <laughs> tangerine dream uh, score sounded like it was done in five minutes and because it, it probably was, you know, Legends but. Legends can be now and oh, forever. Don't. God, don't. No. Teaching oh, us no. to love for goodness sake. <laughs> God, kill me. You know, you this can, is, you can, I you, think you, I have a, I have a particular. Just keep singing and making it up. <laughs> the tape's rolling. We gotta go. <laughs> oh God. Oh, Jesus. Oh, I my wish God. that the I know movie all never the happened. That song. So there's a there's a movie that came out right around then. Um, there's a remake of Mutiny on the Bounty, just called The Bounty, um, and it's amazing with um, Mel Gibson and uh, Anthony Hopkins and like a really really young Dana Day Lewis. And it's a fucking period sailing movie, and Tangerine Dream screws the whole thing. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Why would you score a Dude, period sailing movie yes. with Tangerine Dream? <laughs> no, uh, I know why. Because they ruined Legend. So, uh, you know, they wanted to, you know, they were brought in another movie. Oh, my oh God. My it's God. insane. Anyways, we don't have to rant about that. We're supposed to be talking about art, right? I don't know. Yeah, bring no, it back. we're supposed to be talking bring about Predator. You got t- uh, 13 <laughs> minutes left. Okay, Who did well, the score for Predator? Um, I don't know. I'll look it up. Oh my god. Da, 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 da. Yeah, it's that so good. Like, so yeah, there's it a sounded um, like it's very John Carpenter. Oh, so this what? did it. Oh, fantastic. My dogs are really going at it today. Um, there's a, an interesting thing. I don't know if this story is also apocryphal. It might be true, but um the predator, the design of the predator was created um the so it was originally, I don't know if anyone's seen behind the scenes. Just let the dogs keep going. I don't know if anyone's seen behind the scenes on Predator, but originally Jean-Claude Van Damme was playing the Predator as like a um, alien creature. What? Yeah, he's um he's in a suit. This isn't the apocryphal part, but um or maybe. Uh, wait, wait, what? Um, so yeah, John um Jean-Claude Van Damme plays the Predator in this like bug suit that they didn't end up using in the end, and they reshot pretty much most of the predator sequences you can see a little bit of the bug suit when um the predator is like cloaked crawling through the trees you can kind of see a hint of it because they use some of those shots again um but it's this horrible bug suit um and they cut that all together and then it was up to stan winston studio to remake the suit again because they made the first suit um and and I, i i heard this story and maybe it's true is that uh, Stan Winston's on a plane with his good buddy at the time, um, a man by the name of James Cameron. And Stan Winston's struggling to figure out how to 
design this creature and make it different from this weird bug thing that they had before. And I guess right. on a napkin that they hadn't like imagine in first class or whatever had a little napkin. Apparently James Cameron did a little tiny sketch of the face of how the face should work for the predator. And that's well, what they that's what Stan Winston brought that back to the studio and they designed the predator based off his little tiny sketch that um, James Cameron did. And James Cameron's like, you know, done tons of art. Like if you've seen his art, his um, concept right, sketches right. for the Terminator, yeah, they're yeah. amazing. But right, apparently right. that's where the um, um, initial design for the Predator's look came from um, James Cameron just doodling on a napkin. You're, holy shit. And then of course, the great, late great, um, Kevin Peter Hall, getting in that suit, towering like two full heads over Arnold Schwarzenegger. Who was in that just, suit? An actor by the name of Kevin Peter Hall. Just this giant guy, like seven and a half feet tall, huge. Um, where he was, was he, in the suit. Where was he from? I'm not sure. He's a big dude. Um, he so he did yeah. Predator in one and two, and, um, and then I think he passed away in the '90s, maybe. But wow. Um, and I I think he also did some initial stuff in Alien. I think he was in the suit for that creature as well, but I might be wrong. Um, so Van Damme was supposed to be in that movie. We well, was. Oh yeah, yeah. There's some. There's some great. I'll send you some shots, but people can look it up. There's some great photos of just him sitting with Carl Weathers. What? And he's got like half. He's got half the bug suit on, and it's just silly looking. Um, and then this is obviously before too. his rise to fame, right? I mean, yeah, it's before he did stunt work. Um, back then so it was before he become became like the you know the the leading man in the right. um, 80s and 90s because he was wow. in so many movies in the 90s and like late 80s like right after predator but anyways yeah so he was supposed to be um the creature and you can see footage of him running around in this stupid bug outfit it's like oh a praying mantis God. kind of thing all right live uh Live brushers, your homework between <laughs> now and <laughs> is to look up Van Damme. Maybe that'll yeah. be your second painting after you're done with this. You know, we should try to, because um, we mentioned so many things. We should try to remember painting. Remember the crap that we're listening or remember the stuff that we're referencing and try and put some links. Because there's a whole website that's just, um, that's a big long article about the making of Predator. And it's got tons of photographs of um, of the suit being made, of the of sculpting the um, what was his name? Kevin Kevin Wang, I think, did the major sculpt for the suit at Stan Winston Studio. Um, yeah, I'm getting in the weeds here. What a, but what it, what it, no, no, you're not getting in the weeds. We're, we're do, literally doing a predator. It's true. Oh we should be talking God. about predator. It was that's all, that, all you wanted to do, and then when you do it, then then we're. <laughs> Then you want to derail the show again? No, I mean I could just babble on about Predator all day. If that's I know, what you, but I want to. That's I what the wanna... people want. <laughs> <laughs> Don't ask them. Don't ask them. We just got a barking maniac today. Who knows? I think I think we've uh, uh, we've lost our I producer we... because of the dogs. No, I'm, I'm here. <laughs> she's just she's telling us all about all the birds that she can see right now. Oh yeah, well she oh, can see birds. Okay, all right. This is important stuff. That she's I mean, a, she's got a job to do, but that's why we have her. All right. Oh man. Okay. What else can we slide in with Predator? Um, you know, we got we got John McTiernan, director. He did Die Hard. He did right after Predator. He did a really cool movie called um, Medicine Man. Check it out with Sean Connery. Um, you know, he did. He's just one of the best directors, action movie directors you know, of all time. One of my first uh, teachers, uh, I took a uh, like a summer school continuing education thing at, at Pratt when I was in undergrad and because I wanted to learn like more figure drawing and stuff. And this guy, Greg Webb, who was an animation teacher there, he worked on Predator doing oh, the, um, the uh, what, what's it called? The uh, doing the mats, uh, the optical printing. He ran the optical printer for the, the Predator thing. Um, oh, for his effect. like vision effect? Yeah, vision effect. Yeah. And like when he's oh, running wow. through the thing and and he said that they had like it was done so fast and they had no money like 
it was just like because they had messed up a bunch of film or something like that doing it and they had to like oh, it was, it was a lot like of an reshoots, 11th hour too. thing yeah yeah so this this whole movie sounded like just like like uh, uh just a uh i don't know like a miracle right i mean like it shouldn't yeah have worked, it was you know? super hard to make because they, they're in the they're literally shooting it out in the jungle did they actually you go know? to the jungle for that yeah, I think they went. I want to say they went to Guatemala, but it might be wow. it might be the wrong wrong location. But because um, they it they really did it hard. they did it for the other remakes and the in the, the recent remakes they did not do that. No, they were on sets or something. Yeah, that one was in completely indoors in Austin. And Robert Rodriguez is uh, the one with uh, what's his face? Uh, 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 oh God, the guy, uh, uh, the 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 Predators. Uh, yeah, oh my Predators. God, starring uh, Adrian Brody. Adrian Brody, oh my yeah. goodness! Oh, oh boy, that was yeah. rough. I thought it was, was better than. Good in it, though. Yeah, I actually <laughs> liked that movie compared to like, oh, the Shane Black. I wanted wanted to, you know, the Shane Black. I listen. I know it's hard making a movie and everything like that. I just want to say the Shane Black movie felt like he somebody he was directing someone else to direct a movie. On, on a perfect '90s movie, but he would—he was doing it like by directing them over the phone, you know, like explaining right. it to them. Yeah, it's like he it's wasn't just there. like somebody's it's recalling. Like, this is my yeah. this is my movie, but I can't be on set to make it. Yeah, it's, like, it's like this well, is what it was like in the '90s. <laughs> it tried so hard to be a '90s movie. It's like you can't be that lazy these days with scripts, man. Like it's just. Well, and, I don't and, know. It was overthought, really. I mean, like you look at like Aliens and Predator and Die Hard, and um, you know, the, their scripts are simple, but they're also they don't have a lot of holes in them. They're they're right. pretty clean. Um, there's not a lot right. going on in the script. It's not hyper like it's not really complicated, but they're they're simple and clean, and they 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 execute a very quick movie essentially. I think I, I think with Shane Black's issue with Predators is he just was overthinking it, trying to make it like way more complicated than it needed to be. Like well, also because he movie. had the burden of it being Predators, though, right? Because when Predator Predator was made, it wasn't just it was just another movie action movie. It, you know, it like became Predator. Yeah, if yeah, that makes sense, right? And so it didn't yeah. have the burden of like legacy to contest with. I guess I don't know. That's the thing, right? I mean, the original yeah. Predator was like a, essentially a fluke and should have failed but it's just i don't know sound like an old man here but it's just so pure and, and it was hard to do i think that's like for me a lot of the great movies from the 80s were really hard to make and like they struggled to be made you know like uh, really scott got fired like what three times from blade runner and ultimately yep. like completely fired from the project yep. um it was just those those movies are really hard to make and that's why they're so charming and great. Um, because they, it was a big struggle to make them. I guess we should wrap it up, right, Ty? Or, I think we, yeah. we're coming up on... I guess we're three minutes out, yeah. Yeah, wrap yeah. it up, yeah. gentlemen. So, well, I didn't make it. I didn't finish, right? You happy? I didn't finish. You're not no. supposed to finish. It's two know. sessions. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah. No, he but said I, he would I, work on it longer than that. I like this. I this Predator, though, has like a nice belly. Yeah, I know. I was noticing that when I was going through the reference. It's And if you ever look up pictures of um, Kevin Peter Hall, like he's gigantic dude, but he's super um, lanky. And they, they must have put this big, huge belly on him because he's got this giant ab rack of like, it's like, what is it? One, two, three, four. Five, six, it's like a 20 rack. It's 20 pack. It's an, Let's just say it's anatomically correct. Okay. He's an alien. He can it, have as many abs as he wants. Yeah. So we'll, uh, yeah, we'll continue this uh, <clears throat> next, next time. I, uh, so jo yeah, join us next time on our new time, Saturday, next Saturday at 3.30 Pacific Standard Time and 6.30 Eastern Standard Time. And yeah, we didn't talk about this. We're doing Saturdays, right? We didn't really touch on Yeah, that. we're doing, yeah. So we did uh, change. We have a new prime time schedule. So we kind of moved on up. Now we're on the- Yeah, this the is a basic, feature. Basically, this is a feature. Yeah, so- uh, thank you for everyone who's uh, who, who joined us. But we're, yeah, we're gonna 
continue the Saturday uh, trend on this. So, um, yeah, so come back and watch us finish these things. Will it be a complete uh, travesty? Will it be the Predators, the Predator? Or will these paintings be like the original Predator and be awesome? And what, we will not Find know out. Until, until next week. Until next week. So uh, anyway, so thank you very much. Thank you, Kate, uh, for, for putting up with us. Uh, thank you for all your wonderful questions. And uh, yeah, you can find uh, my name's, I, I've been Raymond Bonilla. And you can find my work at raymondbonilla.com and uh, Ray Bonilla Painter on Instagram. And I'm Tyler and, Jacobson. You can find me at tylerjacobsonart.com. And I, I'm Tyler Jacobson Art as well on Instagram. So check us out there, but we'll be back next week. Yeah, for sure. Thank you, everyone. Bye. Bye-bye.